disaster. They called it the Great Depression. It had been mostly damaged in the USA, in which many people were jobless, people wanted to learn, wanted to get a job, and sometimes you will see these long lines of getting a job in just one place. It was so bad. There were some families that had to sell their children for just money because they couldn't afford to protect them. And this is a very long story, but we don't have time. So, but some people were not suffering. Actually, they were getting richer and richer and richer. They were the mafias of that time. Or, I better say, they called them, the, themselves as the five families of New York. Now, these people who had a very, you know, lavish lifestyle and they had no issue just doing gambling, doing cocaine or, you know, smuggling was many more, many more things. And these people are living their lives and just while people, other people are suffering in their era. I can give you some names here. Like the Meyer Lansky, Mickey Cohen, or Vito Genovese, or Frank Castello, or Lucky Luciano. But the most notorious one was this person, Al Capone. He was also known as Scarface. This person was the most dangerous or the feared gangster in the world. Every time people, every time he got caught in the court, he used to get released by his boy, known as Easy Eddie. Now Easy Eddie was a very, very good lawyer, and he always, every time when Alcohol got caught, he was not, he was freed by him. So it was very valuable for Al Capone to have this lawyer, Easy Eddie. This is Easy Eddie, and he had so many things in his life. But he had only one problem. He had all the wealth in the Depression era, he had all the support from politics and from Al Capone and his gangs. But one thing he suffered that he was not a good example for his son, as you can see. So one day he decided the most crazy thing. He went to the cops and sold all the gangs, gangs and evidence to the police. So Al Capone was caught and was sent to the most feared prison of that time. Al Capone. Al Of course we have seen some movies about Al Capone. It was more dangerous jails of that time and it's now closed because it was violated so many human rights. But, it was not, this was not the end of the story. Later that, Easy Eddie had, was assassinated by the, by the people of Al Capone and other gangs because it damaged them a lot. This was not the first time the person set the example by doing, by sacrificing and getting the, and taking the right decision in order to do it perfectly for the human society. About 30 years later, there was a person named Butch O'Hare in the World War II. He was a pilot of U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force. There was a time that Japanese, even more than just the mafia, attacked the Pearl Harbor. This guy went just alone with his air aircraft and attacked nine other aircrafts of Japan. He Four of them were damaged, and two of them were actually hit by the by the plane, and other ran away. So because of, because of this heroic, you know, experience for this, the show of you know the courage, he was awarded the medal, the highest award of that time by the president of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt. This person set an example for his era as a person as a hero of the nation, of the USA. But something is very, very important. This guy was the son of Edward O'Hare, also known as Easy Eddie. The same person who actually sold Al Capone to the police. Now why this story is very important? It's important because once Easy Eddie or Edward O'Hare took a decision fight against the gangs and, tell, and sold them to the police. If he didn't do that, he, his son, Ocho Her, would be a gangster himself too, not the national hero that became 30 years later. Fellow members, this proves that the decision we take today it can be very, very small, it can be very, very big, makes it 
your society and other people in the future. So take your decision wisely and do it wrong. Thank you.